Hey there, this is Raj here. Welcome to ShareTrek. If you want to know why CTX112 and 131 are next-gen um, uh, CAR-T therapies and uh, how, how much superior they are to the regular CAR-T, this is the video for you. And also, if you want to understand how CTX131 works, this is the video for you. I'm doing these videos because I personally am uh, reading up on CRISPR therapeutics and its various therapies and the indications in order to be a better investor, to better understand the competitive advantage. I'll also be talking about the competitors for CRISPR, uh, CRISPR therapeutics uh, CTX131 and the current standard of care and the cost and the outcome as well. So let's get started. Welcome back friends. CTX131 is an allogenic uh, CAR T cell therapy developed by CRISPR Therapeutics. It targets the CD70 protein found on the uh, on various cancer cells including solid tumors. Currently in a phase 1/2 clinical trial evaluating its safety and efficacy in adult patients with relapsed or refractory solid uh, tumors, CTX131 uses genetically modified T cells to recognize and attack cancer cells expressing CD70. It uses T cells from healthy donors, potentially offering advantages like faster availability and uh, reduced manufacturing complexity. It includes additional genetic edits beyond basic CAR-T therapy, which makes it uh, the next generation. It targets genes like uh, Regnase 1 and uh, TGFBR2 to potentially enhance potency and reduce exhaustion. In my previous videos on CTX112, I had briefly referred to Regnes 1 and uh, TGFBR2 edits, but had not explained. Today I'll explain both of these to you. Regnes 1 is an enzyme that naturally uh, occurs in T cells that degrades certain inhibitory molecules, uh, let's call them microRNA. Overactive Regnes 1 can degrade microRNAs essential for T cell survival and function leading to exhaustion and reduced effectiveness. CTX131 disrupts the Regnes 1 gene using CRISPR technology, dampening its activity and potentially preventing T cell exhaustion. This enables uh, more persistent CAR T cells and longer survived CAR T cells near cancer cells, potentially increasing tumor killing ability of the CAR T. This also enables T cell retain their function for a longer duration. The next question is what is TGFBR2 editing? TGFBR2 is a receptor protein on T cells that binds to transforming growth factor beta or TGF beta, a molecule that suppresses immune responses. Challenge in CAR T therapy is that tumor cells often secrete TGF beta to damp dampen CAR T cell activity. Uh, the CTX131 uh, therapy uh, disrupts the TGFBR2 gene, making T cells less responsive to TGF beta's immunosuppressive effects. This could lead to reduced T cell suppression, and as a result, CAR T cells remain active and functional in the presence of TGF beta, and these cells exhibit improved tumor infiltration. By editing both Regnes 1 and TGF BR2, CTX131 aims to achieve longer lasting anti tumor activity, more potent uh, cancer cell killing. Uh, T cells remain effective in challenging tumor uh, microenvironments where all these kind of uh, dampening factors exist. Now let's look at the competitors that are also conducting clinical trials with similar approach targeting CD70. In this table, I have three competitors to CRISP. As you can see out here, there are three competitors. One is uh, from Sunway Medicine, and another is a Chinese company, and then you have CRISPR Therapeutics and Encarta. But Encarta is also in collaboration with CRISPR Therapeutics. And uh, if you look at uh, the uh, pipeline page on CRISPR Therapeutics, you will find this as being in preclinical uh, trials. So this is not actually a competition, and any gains out here will also help CRISPR Therapeutics. So basically, if you look at the other two companies and uh, they all need to get FDA approval to sell the therapy in US. So I think CRISPR therapeutics is in a safe uh, position uh, when you look at um, uh, it in terms of uh, competitors. We do not know the pricing details as there are no approved CD70 CAR-T therapies as yet in the market. In terms of standard of care, the current standard of care for solid tumor varies based on the specific type of cancers. Generally, a multimodal approach is often employed, uh, combining surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and targeted therapies. 
Immunotherapy has also become a significant component in the treatment of certain solid tumors. Precision medicine, which involves tailoring treatment based on the genetic makeup of the tumor, is gaining prominence. I am providing a general overview, but keep in mind that specifics may vary for, for different types of solid tumors. Surgery is often the primary treatment if the tumor is localized and can be removed. And before removing such a tumor, the surgeons will try to find out if the cancer cells have moved elsewhere. So they will do a scan of the whole body. And if it has not moved anywhere, it's absolutely localized, then they would uh, do surgery. Chemotherapy is used to kill rapidly dividing cells and is effective against various solid tumors. The cost can vary depending on the drugs used, ranging from a few thousand to tens of thousands of dollars per uh, treatment cycle. And you have radiation therapy that destroys uh, targets and destroys cancer cells using high doses of radiation. The cost depends on the type and duration of radiation, but it can range from a few thousands to tens of thousands of dollars. Targeted therapies with drugs that target specific molecules involved in cancer growth, um, I mean, costs can vary, but uh, they tend to be high, sometimes reaching tens of thousands of dollars per month. And we have immunotherapy that boosts the body's immune systems to fight cancer cells. Costs can also be high, ranging from thousands, thousands to tens of thousands of dollars uh, per treatment cycle. And success rate depends on factors such as the type and stage of cancer, as well as individual patient characteristics. Survival rates are often measured in terms of five-year survival, and they can vary widely. It's not known how long it will take for CTX131 to reach a biologics license uh, application stage or monetization stage. However, unless a therapy is approved by FDA, it cannot enter US. Therefore, right now, I think CRISPR therapeutics is in the lead out here. In my previous video on CRISPR, I gave you deep dive details on CTX112. And in this video, I have covered CTX131. In our next video, I'll cover CTX211 for type 1 diabetes. I'm, do this, I'm doing this personally for uh, becoming a better uh, investor by understanding uh, the therapies and the competitive position of uh, CRISPR. And I'm sharing this with you, hoping that it would help you as it helps me. Uh, when we get the next CRISPR earnings call, we'll be in a better position to understand the progress and make sense out of how value addition is either improving or value addition has not happened uh, in the given quarter. So that can make us better investors. Uh, please let me know what you think uh, uh, about this video and uh, all that I had to say through your comments. And um, yeah, that's all for now. I'll be back uh, later with the next video. Bye for now.